yeah no problem maybe you can tell me a bit more about yourself kim and, and what you do and your background in, in vr and AR. yeah okay i i'm coming from a film directing this is where i started um actually i come from the very musician that i was in the beginning i was a drummer i used to play in bands and i used to go pretty easy pretty fast into the professional area where i realized uh, i don't fit so much because i didn't want to spoil the fun making music uh, for a professional uh, business but in the same time i realized uh, i was mega actually before that i started when i was 11 i started with filmmaking and drumming and uh, the filmmaker uh, advanced and uh, became a, a professional director for broadcast tv and um, i realized that it was because you know germany is like what germany is uh, you you find the right way to to put the profile on a, on an advanced stage or you just simply go as an indie uh, like an avant-garde and uh, I always tried to be free as much as I could. So I um, invented uh, the first uh, web series in 2005 before YouTube came to Europe. And it was quite successful because we partnered with Voda, Voda Group, and they loved what we did and they also financed what we did. And so I was quite lucky to receive uh, quite a good amount of money for DV. And uh, I scaled it up already so I can pr present it uh, also now on YouTube still. It's not boring, it's, 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 it's 720p, but it still gives people the tutorials they need to, to find their way through sewing and knitting. Yeah? And uh, it was fun. And it was combined with a social uh, um, uh, approach for themes that are actually not part of that world, like um, prostitution, yeah? something really hard. And, uh, um, social engagement in Berlin at these times, and uh, people loved that. It was shown on 21 uh, regional TV stations. And uh, I realized just by accident, uh, I found something uh, that I can make a large effect. So um, later when I continued doing uh, advertising for TV, which came from that, before I was an editor in, in Munich, I was uh, working for high profile companies in the, in the broadcast TV um, advertising. Uh, before I became a director in Munich as advertising director. And um, um, I realized uh, after this, uh, I created my little company like blendback.tv. And uh, yeah, I went on doing all kinds of content, which declined uh, with the same YouTube uh, that suddenly realized uh, in um, this influencer marketing thing and uh, uh, envisioned uh, a lot of new ways to, to put advertising on a new stage. And so actually I, I, I realized that many people did the same thing I did in 2005 in uh, between 2010 and 2015. Yeah. And uh, I, I wasn't able to continue that one with Buddha because they also uh, realized that it was that easy for them. And uh, they didn't go on with me and uh, they just realized, okay, we can do that ourselves. We have a lot of people that have no work. So let's, let's just do the same thing and uh, I showed them how to, to put their stuff online and to market uh, um, yeah, their, their goods with, with video content uh, in web streaming. So um, I realized uh, also that I always wanted, and that is another thing that happened during my studies in, in the Film Academy in Ludwigsburg. Um, I realized that I wanted uh, VR much more than I wanted film because when I was in Fraunhofer Institute shooting a small, uh, a uh, um, um, film about virtual architecture in uh, 1997. Um, yeah, that was during my studies. Um, I realized actually, why well, should I study film when VR is already so close? But it took VR another 20 years to, to continue. So um, I, uh, in between, I, I did a, a, a quite successful advertising uh, VR marketing uh, in, for Zeiss for the HMD uh, VR1 that they uh, presented in 2015 on the Gamescom. And we were in the middle. We were between Parrot and uh, Trinus to present our uh, interactive game while Oculus and HTC Vive was showing uh, 360 videos. We presented interactive gaming with a Bluetooth controller, a smartphone in the HMD. And we had a long row. We had the longest row in, in, in Hall 10. What, what was the because, game? Because, uh, oh, there's VR now available for everybody. Pardon me? What was the game? So what was the concept behind this game? Say it again. What was the game? What did you develop? Uh, the game was called Iron Ecologist. What, 
iron ecologist. It was a beta. I will show you the details. Uh, I will send you the details. Uh, this, the game is still in development. We actually try to put it out now uh, um, uh, as a VR game, fully VR game for, for the big goggles, not only for the for the for the uh, mobile goggles. Yeah, because the mobile goggles, as you notice, they declined, and uh, yeah, actually a big chance for the industry just went by, and also a good stop tango and things. But now they come back with AR core and stuff. But uh, small developments, yeah. And uh, I, I'm working with somebody who is in that uh, range and working uh, with uh, scanning and all that stuff. So I proceeded now, and actually, I'm, I'm finishing now uh, uh, what I started last year. I have a 360 app that is uh, able to show with a, a database of 110 megabytes um, uh, something that is like interactive explanation of surroundings in high quality 360 uh, uh, bubbles. Um, I have a workflow where I con uh, can uh, combine my own scanning with uh, um, VR film production. And the end is now that I actually, I'm in the middle of shooting, a, a, a in, fully in VR shooting a video clip for a music video for a, a client of mine, which uh, will be the first VR uh, uh, build that I ever did because yeah, I'm not an animator. I don't know how to animate but the assets that I put together. I just created myself in the lightning and uh, this is all happening on, on Steam. And I'm very happy to, to do this because this is actually a kind of fulfillment. So the film started the VR and the VR brings me back to the filming. And this is where I am. And in the middle, I also uh, work with, uh, I have a great developer I work with. Mm -hmm. And we also, uh, uh, invented for Unity Media, which I was uh, part of as an art director for a month in 19, uh, invented an interactive uh, character that was able to be shown in the live Facebook uh, um, uh, video. Yeah, he could interact with people, he could talk, and he could answer questions. Mm. And uh, from that, uh, we, we uh, find now a way to uh, go also into AR, but AR is still developing. I'm still looking on it. As, as, as many people said that AR is uh, faster than VR, I doubt, I think the VR production now gets in such a big, huge space now, and the AR is, is actually quite uh, close to it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's on the same height, but not that far that I, everybody wished. Uh, I see VR now coming much more forward, and uh, uh, I, I hope that with this uh, I can continue my, my work as a filmmaker, as a creator, and also uh, finding products in that. Yeah. So, so for you, where, where do you see the opportunities in the in this current in the VR and AR ecosystem right now? What, what's what's exciting for you today? What, what what kind of projects do you want to create, and where do you see people really like uh, jumping on? like jumping into the experiences, what really catches people's attention um, specifically? Well, it's always the storytelling, yeah. Interactive uh, storytelling is, is, is the main focus uh, since uh, uh, filming uh, always uh, um, brings you on a 90 minutes or 120 minutes uh, experience immersion. Uh, it's nice to have edited content and I love to see film. So yesterday I saw a, a gorgeous movie. Uh, I don't know if you, if you uh, saw, um, it's called, um, uh, um, let me, let me get, uh, Synchronic, you um, should see that, uh, Synchronic. It's an amazing movie. It's from uh, two that uh, did uh, two other movies that are quite famous uh, for, for other, this amazing, amazing, uh, visuals uh, with a great uh, editing context it's to see that film uh, it's it's really um it, it, it's very 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 um I, i'm still touched by it i can't tell you synchronic i would send you the link you have you, to watch where, that where watch um it? because I, I i like the beauty of filmmaking where did you watch it pardon me where, where did you watch this hello uh, the stream is slowing down now. I'm not yeah. sure. Where did I watch this? Yeah. I, I watched that at a friend's place um, yesterday. It was, I don't know, he got it from a stream or so. Just, I, I need to get my, my nose clean because I am, just wait. Having a 
bit of blue still. No, I watched that in a stream uh, from a friend of mine, but um, it's an amazing movie and I still love filmmaking. Yeah, filmmaking is still something uh, very important for me, but in VR, because you have, you, you don't have the necessity to, to ask for uh, additional cameras, additional props, additional studio uh, rentals, just have everything now ready to go in VR. And this is uh, something I want to, to put my focus on now. Um, but in general, I'm totally interested in, in doing, uh, um, yeah, in bringing um, interactive content to people. And so gaming is still uh, some great chance to put good narratives on it. We, we wrote something for that game I told you about uh, in, in, in the Gamescom for Zeiss. And uh, we made a little uh, book about it, it's like a story. But um, until now, we didn't have the tools to to work on it like we, we want to. And now we have the tools. Can we share more about the the, the, the game and, 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 and the story behind it or the universe that you're creating and what kind of, what draws you to it? Well, since I'm uh, working with a developer that uh, created that story with me, I, I, I need to talk to him and I need to um, put more bindings into the whole, uh, all, all our work is, is based on, on, on mutual trust and uh, also on the financing of that stuff because we, we want to put some financing under it, uh, which means if we start this uh, uh, to continue, because it has like four chapters, it's a story that plays under the sea. And uh, I'm a diver. Uh, while I was in the military, I wanted to become a SEAL in the German SEAL team. And I still love being in water. It's, it's like still something so special. And, and uh, from that passion came actually the, the development. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a role play, uh, an RPG underwater in VR with a great uh, narrative behind. And, and it's so funny because uh, when we started um, putting out that narrative for us, just explaining what we actually want to tell people, um, uh, the uh, scientists uh, in that area, what we are talking about, found exactly what we are talking about. Mm -hmm. And it was like a strange proof of concept that we uh, uh, explored because uh, before it was our fantasy. And uh, some couple of months later, um, I, I read something about it and I was like shocked because that's actually our story. And the story seems to be more real than we thought. We, we just extended to a very fictional way. And, and, and how, do you, how do you find your audience specifically for these experiences you create? Okay. And do this on our own. Yeah. And, and how do you find your audiences for the, for the, for the experiences you create? How do you, how, do you get, how do you get your VR experiences out there? How will you kind of find your market? Um, I think, first of all, it's necessary to, to have a, a proof of concept, like uh, uh, an, an, a, a very alpha rich beta version of something that people like to do. Um, the, um, the story uh, um, is very, I think it's, it's, it's a very great story. It's, 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 not, it's nothing that hasn't been told in different ways. Yeah? Uh, some, some idea could be like Bioshock, yeah? that is a bit, you know, like a, uh, like a, like a, a thing that we like to, uh, like that, that I loved, I loved Bioshock, yeah. But um, it, it's, 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 it's far beyond that. You know, it's, we, we are not dealing here with, uh, with, a, with a city or with something close. Yeah, it's, a, it's supposed to be a very open world in which we go and uh, find things and explore things. And uh, if we explore, continue explore, exploring the things, we also uh, find more of the story content, yeah. But um, the, the, the uh, audience, I think, is growing now. So while we start our game, um, in producing our game or getting closer to what we think is, a, is the production value behind that, um, the audience is growing. So um, now it's always focused on shooters and uh, all kind of fast paced gaming. But I think this is not the thing that people love in VR. People love to explore mystical places like like uh, hidden places like things they really this is this is beautiful yeah because this is something i see now because people want to to do uh, shooting more than exploring and uh, i think exploring is what vr is good for um teaching people you know uh, educate people 
Um, so the game is actually a simulation of something very real, but uh, um, yeah, I would call it uh, steampunk. Yeah, and, and that we use. Yeah. Nice. I'd love. To, I'd love to see that when it's ready. Uh, Thank I've you. Got yeah. Is about your next projects. What you'd like to do next, and what kind of experience stories you want to tell. This is an article. Yeah, as I said, I'm, I'm focusing now on, on a video clip that I'm shooting in VR. And uh, from that experiences come, that we make in, in this shooting, we also uh, want to start our game development now on, on this platform that we work with. Mm -hmm. And um, um, I also think that um, uh, video production, like I wouldn't say a, 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 a TV series or something, but we can also do both. Um, we, we have the chance now to, to um, do a, a game as much as we can uh, sell or like, like um, I, I don't have the right wording now. Uh, sorry, I, last year I had a very hard accident and I hit my head on, on the street. So uh, I'm sometimes a bit uh, un, un, not in condition. Um, um, we, we have actually, actually two ways uh, to, to do this content. One way is uh, to make a game that uh, the, the user is uh, having his own narrative, but from the same uh, structure, we can also create a, a given story uh, in a video content. Yeah? So both is actually, uh, we, we use it in both ways. That, that's, that's actually the, the idea behind. Yeah? And, 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 how and that's where I'm focused on now. How does someone pitch an idea to you for a, a future VR story? to create what's the what's the process if, if someone to come to you and say listen i've got a great idea i want to explore with you how do you kind of get your get you on board to kind of help uh, create that experience in vr yeah it's quite tough um if you would have told people in 2005 there's going to be uh, web streaming as the number one marketing content in the world um people would have told you in germany yeah internet is is nice but it won't continue yeah? And uh, I had the same problem in, in 2005. I needed to, to tell people about what I want to do. And it was tough because nobody wanted to listen because they always thought TV is still the thing and cinema and what about the web and so on. Uh, we I'm, just started it. But I'm we, listening. I, I believe it's the future. I think there's a lot of amazing content. I think VR is a great way to showcase and tell stories. Showcase great content and tell stories. I mean, that's why I'm in the space. Yeah. So my question to you specifically is, if someone has a good story, because you're a content creator, you're a storyteller, so you're creating content and you like to mm -hmm. uh, bring those to life in, in, in the medium of VR as opposed to traditional TV or, or film. Mm -hmm. um, so let's say I had mm -hmm. a great idea that I wanted, that I thought, oh, something I thought was a great mm -hmm. idea. And I felt that VR would be a perfect medium to tell that story. How does someone engage you in that process? I don't understand if somebody asks me for doing this or if I have to convince somebody to finance me. Someone asks you to, someone mm -hmm. wants to pitch an idea to you to get you to create okay. a film in VR with mm -hmm. them. What's, mm -hmm. what, how do you go about choosing projects? Well, since I'm uh, uh, now uh, totally focusing again on my own stuff, um, I, I didn't get any pitch uh, in, in that direction. I just, um, uh, nobody actually asks me uh, in, in Germany because it's still uh, some very, I, I would call it very virgin field. Um, you know, you were in Berlin, Mitte. Um, everybody is so advanced in tech, but when it comes to the, to, to the point of, uh, yeah, where's the hook, where's the fun? They, they don't know, yeah. And uh, it's, it's the same thing vice versa when you tell people about what you want to do they want a proof of concept so actually i'm now i'm doing something i i, I so if somebody pitches a story to me um i would uh, think about what what does it with me if, if i'm touched by it if the story just takes me and uh, and if it's like that i would start with my uh, tools to work on it and to make something that can present uh, this this story in a certain way but as I said, I have the tools now. I can can do something uh, in that. Before I didn't have uh, last year. This time 
I, I wasn't even uh, able to 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 uh, to enter VR. I was only in mobile VR. But now I have uh, with the possibilities I have now and uh, with the platform I have, um, I can do a lot more than one year ago at the same time. So okay. it it depends on 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 the passion I think and on the on the thrive on the on the narrative. What what is the idea of the narrative in the end? Yeah. And uh, just another story in this world, uh, you know, that is is backpacked on somebody else's ideas is not for me. You know, I would love. Uh, to I, I think uh, you, you create your own story, and so I would love to yes. do a recreate. Just as something that I'm interested in, it's a recreation of what it was like to receive. It's just me as something I'm interested in. Receive uh, the ten utterances at Mount Sinai. I like to create these kind of like biblical epic biblical like epic uh biblical kind of like experiences and that what was it like to be there under this mount sinai when moses revealed these 10 utterances and you're part of uh the the slave mm -hmm. israel who had come and who were kind of standing who were kind of in awe of this first experience and how would that how was that ex experience shared what was he sharing why was it so impactful and how can you visualize that revelation and it's kind of like the visualization of a revelation in a particular place for me that's actually a really interesting um concept because we everyone has believes they have an idea of it and, and the best we've got so far is is <coughs> um charlton heston's moses that's the best thing we've got which is 60 years old and that's the that's the visual that everyone has in their head right now and that's so and, and nothing has been really done since mm -hmm. the 50s to kind of help people reimagine this this epic story, this universal story that kind of sits at the sits at the at the, at the bedrock of all of them, mm -hmm. and it is this singular moment in 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 the, in the human history, the human story, let's say, the, the the human narrative that is was that has never really been realized in its fullest full potential. So we haven't managed to really connect and our generation doesn't know how to connect to this idea and i just love this idea in vr that we could recreate this experience mm -hmm. and also what was he sharing why was it so powerful and how did it awaken these people i get very i'm very in this mm -hmm. my personal that's separate from toys and mm -hmm. games I'm really like pivoting from something that i wanted to talk to you about but like if i was to ask you to create something that would be yeah it's wonderful that would be this that would be mm -hmm. the that I would want to focus on specifically for my work that I do outside of VR. And it's to do with sound and what sound is, the science yeah. of sound, and how you can visualize sound expanding through uh, from this place across this space to awake that this sound, whatever was revealed, awakens 600,000 people kind of in this moment. And what does it mean to be awake? And so it's very interesting to. Mm -hmm. about how that impact and, and to <laughs> stand in that experience that would be what i'd want to explore personally but yeah <clears throat> well sounds huge um to to um to give you a, a very uh, practical answer uh first of all i would start um okay put it like this um my family is from israel so um i'm uh, i can call myself uh, Quite close to these biblical uh, uh, things that happened uh, in in, uh, in in the legacy of the, the Jewish uh, development. And Are you Jewish? Yeah. And um, I did. Um, Are you Jewish? Say it again. Are you Jewish? No, okay. I'm. I'm uh, no, I'm not Jewish. My family. I, I mean, I, my my wife is from Israel. Your wife's Jewish. And my family, my children, they they speak both. Just they speak Hebrew both languages. Hebrew. They speak Hebrew and uh, amazing, amazing. So, but that say mean, it again. That's amazing. It means your children are Jewish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, as I um, was thinking about what to explore next after the Zeiss event of our um, diving game, I uh, thought about what actually would be necessary what could be something that i can handle so i asked my uh, uh, uh one of my um family members because he is a guide in jerusalem for uh, um all kind of uh, of uh, places there 
And he told me if I want, I can explore with him the Last Supper room. And at that time, I didn't know anything about photogrammetry so much. And I wasn't actually able to, to do this. I just made some photos. But in the end, and you can find that on the Google store, uh, it ended up in the Last Supper VR experience. And um, it's, uh, it's just a room creation for mobile VR in which you have a guided tour as well as you don't have. So if you don't want to have a guided tour, uh, there's no narrator speaking to you. But if you want to have the guided tour, uh, yeah, if you don't, yeah, there's no narrator and you can explore it by yourself with a Bluetooth controller. It's very simple, yeah. The, actually, the most interactive thing is uh, going upstairs, yeah. But looking into a, a visualization of that place that really exists and uh, in the talk, so in the narr narration of that whole thing, you find uh, the depths of the whole thing. So every tourist that wasn't able to go inside because it was too hot, the place was closed, I didn't know uh, what, what can be the reasons to not go, can have in the bus um, this a little app and uh, just go with a Google Cardboard inside the Last Supper VR and still have something to bring at home to show the children and everybody else. Um, that was in 2016. So um, I did this and as, as I said, you find it on the Google store and you can watch that. There's a video also uh, with it and, uh, and then you look inside, but it's a very basic view. It was this very, it looks very computerized. It's not that real, yeah, because in the end, the whole data is 60 a megabyte. So why did I tell you this? Um, the reason is because if you explore that field, I think the magic behind um, uh, um, biblical themes are what if, not it happened. What if, yeah? So people can go there, they have an empty room. There's no Jesus waiting for you. There's no 13 disciples talking to you. Um, it's just the room itself, basic. You have to still go your own imagination. And I thought maybe I will put a Jesus and the disciples into it and you will see them running around and doing all kinds of things, talking. But this is that we can do now with meta humans yeah, four years later. And uh, uh, I'm not sure if I will continue in that because uh, I saw how people uh, reacted on that. First of all, uh, the adaption of mobile VR is very hard if you don't have the money to, to uh, market these things. Nobody wants it. So in the beginning, uh, I started with uh, uh, charging people one euro for that, or five euro it was in the beginning. Now it was two euros. And then I thought, take it, yeah, just get it for free and ex explore it. Because I was at that time uh, very much in contact with Simon Schedeber. I don't know if you know this guy. It's uh, Realities Virtual in Auckland. He's a master of visualization. He did um, uh, several things that you find on SteamVR. Just put in Simon Chedeber and you will go uh, to somebody who's really, uh, he's a crazy, he's really crazy. He, he said, if I want to put this out, it's for free. Yeah. Sure. If you could so to come back to type his name, me? if you could type his name, that'd be really helpful just to share his name. Simon. Uh, in, in... Uh, let me see where I can put this. Uh, okay. Wait. But to come back, you're about to say. Um, yeah, yeah. I just let me. Uh, okay. <clears throat> I just type it. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, just just look for that, and it's Realities Virtual. That's the company in Auckland. Yeah, and um, he put his content out for free. So I thought, okay, because I see that VR is still startlities that we can offer. Um, I put it out for free, but nothing happened actually. You know, it's just some. I don't know, 200 people downloaded it, liked it, and just deleted it, or I didn't know, even know if they tried with a Bluetooth controller. But now um, uh, I put it back on the platform that we have, and we want to to make it look nicer, so next time I'll be at keeping stops, you know, and the lockdown stops, and we have the possibility to travel again. I will be there with my stuff, and I will uh, um, 
uh, get a, a new photogrammetry from that so that we have something more realistic to present. But um, as I said, if you do this kind of stuff, you do it for an information or you do it when you do it as a gaming uh, uh, thing with this or a simulation that interests children or believers, you know, um, I think um, it's, it's interesting to, uh, to, to tell that story from the point of Moses or to tell it from somebody who is part of the 6,000 people. Yeah. And to give that a story. Yeah. So um, then, then you have a, a reason yeah? because uh, I want to explore something and I need a reason to explore that. And uh, the only reason uh, I, I come here to see this, this big show, uh, I, I put it now in this word, you know, if you want to show people something, um, this big show of um, the Ten Commandments, what happened, how did he explain that? Um, you follow the narrative. This is like a doc BBC documentary that you actually uh, start in, an immersive BBC documentary. And you can make it uh, as a game, yeah, for sure. And I think you will find a lot of time that you have. Yeah, so if that is ready in three years, um, this could be an awesome thing. And I think the church would love you for that, yeah. But always keep in mind that um, an immersion is something that where you want to tell people more, yeah. Not only the, the story, the, the Charlton Heston magic, yeah, the Hollywood magic, but um, something that makes you understand how people lived at yeah, that time. For sure. And uh, that was would be my point of view. Uh, so if I would start this, uh, I would really think, where's my point of view for that story and why shall I tell to whom? Yeah, where, where's the target audience? Yeah. Yeah. Is that only believers? Is that people that are fascinated by old storytelling from the Bible? What what is the 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 USP here? Yeah. Um, I, I work. I, I one of my I don't know if you've read my my profile, uh, my LinkedIn profile, but it's one of the projects I'm doing. This is now we're just moving away from toys and games. I was going to ask your point of view on the toys and games space, and have you got any good ideas for AR and VR for toys and games? And that's maybe if you have anything that that comes to mind now, let me know. Uh, but if not, um, mm -hmm. my focus... yeah, I have ideas. I have ideas. Yeah, do you want to talk about that? Do you want to share that? Maybe we can. We can. Talk can you? Can, can. Yeah. First of all, I have a small critic, because I was on that YouTube channel, and there is a, a part where you suddenly go with a smartphone onto a gate, and there's a street in front of you. Okay. Which YouTube? Which YouTube? Before you enter the the RS AR space. Which 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 project are we talking about? Uh, I was I, I will send you the link. I just I was on this YouTube channel from this Smart Toys. Uh, there was uh, okay. uh, I don't know if it's a don't don't worry about that too too much. Uh, I wouldn't worry about too. too no, much. not worrying. I just think about as a father, and that's another point of view. Um, if I think about, uh, do you have children, by the way? No, I don't. No, no, no. See, th this is one very great point of view I have because I have three, uh, actually I have four, yeah. But uh, the smallest egg is now eight years old and she's, she's perfect, you know, she knows a lot of things. Uh, she loves uh, Skylanders, you know, she's totally in this kind of uh, gaming thing with her best friend. And uh, I see how the Skylanders that are actually in 2011, uh, 11, I told everybody, don't, don't touch that. This is crazy stuff. This is not good for the children, yeah. It's amazing. It's simply amazing, yeah. It's an amazing, uh, it's the only product from Activision I really like because all the other products I don't like, yeah. It's bullshit, the Call of Duty stuff. And so, because it's it's gambling, yeah. But Skyland is, is a very good in development. And uh, if you have this, for me, very successful toy, smart toy, um, I, I would uh, think about, okay, which kind of mid-sized clients uh, actually have a product that has already an audience and how can I target them with some ideas they never thought about? Because in this world, you can include all the materials, everything. And uh, you just need a good pitch and uh, some, you know, some, some, some alpha or beta version of what you want to show. And for sure you will get the people, yeah. But the thing is, in the end of the day, the reading of a book, yeah, 
is something that the children like when you read at night. Yeah. Um, the real touching of, of something, yeah, that is continued in this space is something they love because they want, they also play with the Skylanders when their TV is not on. Yeah. And uh, because they, the, the figures are fascinating for them and the stories behind the figures. And uh, it's a very deep space. Yeah? If you ever touch Skylanders, you won't believe how deep this space is. Yeah? It's, it's sometimes like, it's, it's like Warcraft actually, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, there's a legacy already for, from some figures. Yeah? And uh, I could, I could uh, uh, see that. I could um, um, find out with my children why they were playing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Amazing. Thank you. That's a good thing to, to explore. Like things that already have an existing universe, like Skylanders, yeah. Wemmer, that has a lot of traction on AR because you can. Skylanders is Skylanders is like the blueprint for for a, 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 a successful a toy, mm. but. Um, you know that Disney failed totally. Although Disney has a very rich universe of own characters with a grand, with a big legacy, but Infinite failed. It didn't uh, get the market they wanted, and I think uh, because they told the stories wrong, that they right. actually wanted to put out, they just copy paste uh, Skylanders, and that didn't work. They should have developed something unique, and they didn't do it, and that was a big fault, I think. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, so. Disney hasn't managed to crack it then in, in, in this particular space. On the long term, no. I mean, the figures now that you can, uh, in the next years, uh, the, the collectors you also have in mind, you know, people who collect toys. Yeah, it's not only children, it's also their parents. Um, I, I'm not that, I, I'm not collecting these kind of things, but I know there's a lot of collectors out there. If you follow the Easy Allies, for example, um, which used to be the GT team uh, of, uh, of, uh, um, um, game trailers um they are huge fans yeah and uh, they they uh, the 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 boss of this team is a huge fan of the infinite figures and this collection will get up in price you know so this this artwork behind will continue but um the gaming is not interesting anymore because uh, it, it didn't reach the audience and uh, so there's all kind of things that you have to keep in mind if you design something like that it's not only the story it's the figure it's the product itself what what, what does it feel like you know and it leads a long it needs a long way of uh, of uh, um um uh, what is the word um well i will have it in, in a few seconds of prototyping prototyping is the word um and to be close to 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 the to the audience that you target yeah I'm sure that you have in the elder people, yeah, you have a very great audience uh, to put out the combination of uh, um, statues with this kind of story, yeah, uh, behind uh, augmented reality story. Or, yeah, if, if you have a statue, yeah, and this can come to life um, and you tell a story around that, yeah, it's, it's exciting for people who are collectors. So you can invent all kinds of, of crazy things just by knowing the purpose of uh, what people want, yeah? So the collectors want a statue that shines, that looks bright, brilliant, yeah? But if you tell a story behind that, it's some, some crazy life starts to I get actually, on when you have your you tablet. Know, you know Todd McFarlane? He does yeah, yeah, definitely, Spawn. I, so I went to, to, to meet with Todd McFarlane and he gave me this guy um oh yeah <laughs> so and, cool. and, and we were talking specifically about how we would bring his product his statues to life and what and whether that has and he yeah. did he actually funny enough he didn't <coughs> value apart from maybe product placement or merchandising and in-store kind of like experiencing he didn't really see how that would work very well and he didn't feel that that had much longevity for his products. And I was really surprised because I thought, well, you know, if there's anyone who's going to really understand the value of kind of like, kind of like bringing kind of like, uh, uh, like statues or, or high end toys to mm -hmm. life in a physical space and making an interact, it would be totally McFarlane. But 
he'd explored stuff, he'd considered it, he'd, and that wasn't high on his priority list. And that was very interesting because he just didn't feel there was much of a much interest that people would do that. And, I, mm -hmm. and so when I discussed it with him, and we were kind of brainstorming ideas about what we could do and what characters could. I mean, I was like, well, think about well, the universe of Spawn and how that could really like. Uh, like take off and what we could do with the physical space and how it could interact with our, you know, and I, 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 I just mm -hmm. wanted to, uh, I, I wanted to go down that, that I wanted to, I wanted to, 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 to ideate with him in, in, in this, in this particular space, but, uh, he'd done some tests and he didn't feel it. And that was really interesting. So I hear what you're saying, but when you go into the detail of it, it's like the, what's the value? Like it, for me or you is like, well, that do we, in my mind, it might, it, there must be tremendous value for that type of experience. But actually, when it comes to the consumers uh, and how they kind of respond to, that they they want that they're still very into the physical, the physicality of something, and that is the connection mm -hmm. the feeling with the AR. And again, mm -hmm. to do with how lighting works and how shadow, and how much, how you get the qualitative aspects and how well you can integrate that with the animation aspects. Yeah, he's see, or maybe he said no to me and then he went off and explored it himself. But I saw that he'd done a bunch of tests for some of his comic books. And yeah, we talked about some of the comic books coming to life and Spawn jumping out. And uh, but he felt it was, uh -huh. he just he just didn't see it. And I was, and I was so uh, surprised that that was his reaction, to be honest. And then, uh, then we were going, mm -hmm. actually, uh, yeah, that's. Eventually, mm -hmm. we, we, we kind of decided on one of his products called Shark Shark, and we were going to go away and prove that it could work. Uh, and then, but yeah. as I left the, the US, COVID kicked off and everything went into shutdown, and that kind of that conversation stopped. But we, we, he was willing to explore it on a product that I felt was arguably one of the less attractive of his uh, toy range. I was like, well, why would you go with Why mm -hmm. not? But I guess it was to do with uh, getting the right guys on. On, on, you know, he didn't even have access to the licensed Spawn content. So even the Spawn movie, where they had got a lot of the existing animation uh, walk cycles, and, and where I thought we could use some of the existing stock uh, mm -hmm. content, and then and bring that integrate, bring that into into AR, and then we would save on cost. He 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 didn't have, he couldn't do it because it was all owned by the studio that mm -hmm. the film. So that never happened. But I hear what you're saying, and I think I I always thought that might be I I and I spoke to a lot of guys at toy fairs. Specifically, can, can I interfere in this? Can I interfere in this? Of course. It's very simple, the answer. Because what, what does the collector want? He wants something unique. He wants something that is only his. Yeah. He wants to put it on his shelf and it shall shine. Yeah. And um, what if the story of that figure continues in upgrading it? But sense of upgrading the purpose of upgrading is not putting another plastic on it yeah like the spawn suddenly can change his cape yeah mm -hmm. with the upgrade because the base the foundation of this toy is already the ar world mm -hmm. uh, with the upgrade comes another narrative mm -hmm. so the the collection extends on a very mutual base because uh, the collector wants this extra gadget this arm ring this I don't know, new mask, yeah? Because it brings out something new. So he can still explore his actually dead object on his shelf and he can always find new fascinating ways of exploring this figure. So the figure is not only standing in dust, it's mm -hmm. some, some, something that starts to live, yeah? Mm -hmm. But only by grading it up, yeah? So you have a basic thing and the story behind that is um, so give so, 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 uh, this figure and it starts. So give an example, uh, just let's okay. Superman, for example, Batman. You have okay. the screen of Superman or Batman, and then you have your AR yeah. kind of app or your it's a it's a web AR experience, and uh, you, uh -huh. you point your phone or your smart glasses, you look at the, the product, and then it then it comes like, what's this upgrade? How do you experience that? Why? Why is that suddenly a, why does that feel so compelling? And why would people keep playing with it? Because it's also- Well, you have the possibility now to interact with um, meta humans. So you have the possibility to interact with all kinds of, of possible narratives. 
so if you have that statue to begin with, um, the basic version of that statue um, is something that can talk to you. It's a clever KI behind, uh, AI behind, yeah? Something that that um, lives with you, that's something that you can talk to, yeah? This, this, this there is for sure, uh, if, if I uh, envision it, um, you have this statue, but when you point your smartphone, before you have, uh, you define a space, yeah? In which the, the uh, AI behind uh, already recognizes the obstacles, like you have the table, a chair, I don't know where you put your figure, but this this spirit that goes out of this figure, which is uh, can be um, a bit more or less in colors, yeah, because the objects still shall shine, but the spirit that goes out, yeah, um, suddenly interacts with the with the place. If you talk to it, yeah, you can talk to it. You can tell him something, and he reacts to it, yeah, whatever that is, and. Um, in, in that narrative that you explore on your table, this living statue um, that interacts with you. And it's a lot of license that you're facing because you need a lot of people telling you the right story for that no, moment. The yeah. license um, is, you got to get the animation uh, right. You got to get the character right. You got so many areas of signing off to ensure that you stay in, in line with the existed scripted narrative. You can't, make Superman or Batman or one of these other famous <coughs> do something that falls mm -hmm. outside of their identity because then you you, dis, you distort yeah. it and, you, and that's something that they're very careful. So the fear of distortion. So finding like writing a, a, a program for a smart, so a, a real time responsive AI platform, well, you've got that with, with, um, with, with uh, what do you call it? With, with, with uh, messaging. Yeah, messaging so it's like I, I, i'm just trying to think of things mm -hmm. like costing like how much would it cost to 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 build something like that and how much kind of red tape you have to go through to get it signed off by the different creative teams to make mm -hmm. it viable and then you've got to get the animation up to par with what exists. there's so many hurdles with, I, I like, I mean, these, these, in principle, these are really cool ideas, right? But in practice, it's easy just to talk about something like, we could do this and this and this. And the reality of actually pulling something off and pulling it off successfully within a budget that uh -huh. makes sense. Because if, you, if someone's going to take a punt at something, a punt is like a risk, because it's a risk, because it's like, there's no guarantee yeah. it's going to work because no one's done it yet. So it's like, it's a good idea. But then you're saying, well, who's got to, who spends, who invests in this? And, and who, yeah, yeah like, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go so far now. I would just start with the story. I would start the story from the collector's point of view. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that you have something that you tell people as a fundamental base. There's no question about it later. So if you go to pitch that, this is this is tough. This is not something that you just put away and you just yeah. But who wants that? It's it's. You must have that, yeah. In the end of that pitch, yeah. So you start actually with the with the technique behind that um, and the story, yeah. In 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 on on a, both together, yeah. Story and technique. So um, if you have a solution, you have some kind of alpha, some beta to present, and the fascination. This the fascination is guaranteed because I know um, people have their collection, yeah, behind them. In their in their uh, influencer talk uh, about I don't know there's so many collectors out there yeah um, <laughs> if suddenly you can start that. putting this in your video because you have the like I mean I would be surprised if Lego's not doing something like that that would be more of a because also with Lego you're gonna they're much more aligned to AR and they've already kind of animated a lot of their characters I don't like a Lego no no Le Lego is is a special universe I I just I, I follow a channel of a guy that um, used to do a lot of, because he came from, comes from this fascination of Lego. This German guy is very successful on YouTube. And um, he uh, started to have problems with Lego because uh, of their license thing. They started to, to cut him down, yeah? To tell him what to say. And uh, I think in this world, um, you need a structure. You need also a, a, a legal structure, yeah? Like, like, what can you do? What can you don't? What, what is the do and do nots? But, if, if you let people swim out and suddenly they explore uh, a, 
um, 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 what's the word? A, a border, yeah, a wall, uh, because of rights. And you didn't tell them before. It's and this is what happened to Lego. This very successful channel turned. They they were so stupid to turn this guy against them. So he went over to a um, to a competitive competitor product, which is already very successful. It's, it's brick something blue brick blue bricks yeah and they are very open to to take this uh, user base and uh, now he is shutting down lego he's still talking about lego but um he received a lot of law uh, 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 letters from the from the bureaus and uh, now he's just doing what what he uh, he is very critical with lego and actually when in the end it comes out that the blue bricks are much better yeah, because they are more into what Lego started. Yeah, so um, the, the I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend Lego because they're very tough. They're too huge. Yeah, but if you start with Todd McFarlane, who might have a new figure in 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 the making, yeah. some new story, some new creation, some character, or you find somebody else uh, who is because uh, uh, the 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 Marvel universe now is exploding. If you see Wanda Vision, did you see Wanda Vision? I, I haven't played with it. No, I haven't explored it that much now. No, I mean, have you seen WandaVision, which is now on Disney Plus? No, no, no. no. The series? No. Watch that. Is it's it a it? totally new take on, on Marvel, yeah, on the full Marvel universe. There's so much space for this kind of, of stuff, yeah, and people will be happy to explore these worlds uh, um, with, with these narratives behind, yeah. Uh, it's, it's very complex, as you said, yeah, but uh, I would choose... Uh, something that you feel your own passion for, a toy or a story that you, like you said, the Batman, for example. Yeah, why is the Batman so great? Because the Batman is more in our age, you know, is more uh, with, uh, he, he, we, we started to adore this figure. Uh, for me personally, it's Spider Man. I still love the Sam Raimi Spider Man much more than the Spider Man that is now. Yeah. yeah. But still, they they managed to, to save that. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah. but, uh, uh, for me, it was always Spider-Man and Batman. And now, uh, if I would tell the story of the Dark Knight, I would tell something much more closer to to this world. Yeah, I would really, uh, I would, I would not take him out of Gotham City. But if Gotham City in my world, this would be something I can, I can easily uh, um, 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 uh, yeah, immerse in because it's part of my life. I don't know how to explain it better, but. Um, um, something that is in my reality. So just to, to go back to this, uh, what you said, I was going to finance that. Um, the next step is the portal, yeah? So you go with your statue into his world or into her world, yeah? And you can travel with her or with him into this AR world that is going to suddenly um, start in your, in your place, yeah? So step by step, you get closer to possibilities infinite, yeah? That's why they called it maybe infinite. I mean, it was never infinite because the story wasn't infinite, yeah? Um, you, you can mix your reality with this reality. And uh, I think um, we have, if, if immersion is, is the topic here, um, you have to find the, the you have to be very, um, um, not only responsible, but you have to be very, um, um, uh, what is courageous? Yeah, Th this is why we say Vanda Vision. Vision is a very courageous take on the Marvel universe. Very courageous. If you see that first nine episodes, you will understand what I said because it starts very shallow and you don't understand what they're actually talking about. And this is already the hook. Yeah, that you don't understand what they are talking about because you're an expert. Yeah, me and you, we know the Marvel universe. We grew up with that. Yeah, but WandaVision just puts me into a totally new, hey, I didn't think so far. Yeah, but they did it. Mm -hmm. And um, they did it. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's so dark. It's so grown up. It's so enhanced. It's so rich. Um, I wonder how the Avengers uh, find their place in that. But WandaVision, it's, it's amazing. It's really amazing. And they mix so many genres. Watch yeah. that. Yeah. Nice. WandaVision. I'm, I'm, I'm on that. Amazing um try try to watch that nice i think because this, it's a new take yeah yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna i think 
Listen, I'm, I'm going to thank you very much for your time, Kim. I think it's been a really good chat. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, hopefully, I could give you some 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 nice yeah, input. Nice. I mean, yeah. maybe we maybe we can we can uh, we can talk about other. I mean, it sounds like you love the toys and games space yourself. Although you're just a you're just a fan, and through being a fan, you, you stories. You the like stories the, behind. It's all about it's all about the stories. It's all about connecting to the stories of products and bringing those stories to life. And for me, it's really. If, if, if there's any takeaway, that's the simple message is what, how do we enhance existing narratives where they are and making that like the focus of what everything should be about. And if it doesn't bring the narrative to life, it doesn't enhance the characters of the universe, then it doesn't really offer any value. Mm -hmm. I think that, that's a key. Yeah. Thing. So I also have the possibilities to, to invent things technically. So um, because I have a very great developer that I work with mm -hmm. and uh, he's very open and he's not in the industry. Actually, I'm his industry. So if you have something that you uh, put on the table um, and that should work, just tell me. And we make a plan how to finance that and how to, to, to cause like we all, we work for money. Yeah. But um, if you have something that you really well, for, put your for, passion in, in and which, you, you have a, a slight idea how to finance that. I mean, so, let's stop this conversation and let's go i want to just call you back just mm -hmm. to have, just to continue this this little last bit okay so i'm going to stop and, and then maybe jump back into the call okay mm -hmm. okay if i end the meeting but then jump back in because yeah I, I need to go now and take the children um because they they uh... can, can we continue tomorrow let's 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 pick up this conversation again another time i think that's a good call Thank you very much, Kim, and uh, I look forward to speaking to you soon. Okay, perfect. Nice.